Each year, the Olivier's gives a special award to someone who is a... Do it again. <laughs> sorry. Please, I meant to say. Sorry. Oh, hashtag. Anyway, shush. Each year, the Olivier's gives a special award to someone who has achieved the extraordinary in London theatre. Here is a short piece celebrating this year's recipient. David Lamb has created one of the happiest creative environments I've ever worked in in my professional career. He's also created and enabled one of the most diverse audiences access to the greatest work London has ever seen. Uh, David is a total control freak. He even knows when a director has sneezed in his rehearsal room. He's gentle and generous and supports actors wholeheartedly. A showman with heart, intelligence, with one of the driest, naughtiest senses of humour around. When we were making films for the Young Vic fundraising galas, he took very little persuasion to act in them. We thought about the audience as much as we have about the art we put on stage. He's an utterly extraordinary and vital artistic director. He has put the artist at the very centre of this organisation and without doubt has changed the very shape of British theatre. I really appreciate how much David supports and nurtures the production department of this building. He cares desperately about the world, the people in it and the artists who can communicate with those people. Being a political refugee in London, when you get a home, it's very important for a feeling of belonging. David gave us that feeling when we left dictatorship. David Lamb, I love you. David is the best producer I ever met. Sorry out there, it's the truth. To speak about tonight's special award recipient, Olivier Award winner, Juliet Stevenson. Good evening, everybody. Well, it's very glorious uh, to be standing here in good faith and in fact, in the best possible faith, because there is really nobody in our talent-crammed industry who I would rather publicly adore, honor, and celebrate. At the last show I did at the Young Vic, called Wings, we took a chance on a rather beautiful and challenging and eccentric piece. Um, a bold decision was made by our wonderful director, Natalie Abrahami, and her great team to have me strapped into a harness and flown throughout the evening. So quite a few new skills were acquired by, uh, by us all. And I was in my dressing room just minutes before the first preview, shaking with nerves and uncertainty. And David came in and quietly sat down in the corner. He asked me how I was feeling. Well, terrified, I said. I don't know what this piece is, I don't know what we've made, or even if we've made anything, and I don't know what they'll make of it. In fact, I've never had less idea about anything in my life. There was a pause. Well, that's why we do it, isn't it? He said. We do the thing we don't know how to do. So go out there and do that thing you don't know how to do. And that quiet remark typifies his vision for his 18 astonishing years at the Young Vic. Because when you don't know, you have to ask questions. And David's tenure has been shaped by the questions that he has asked. What's theater for? Why do we make it? Who does it serve? How can we push out its boundaries, keeping it evolving and alive? He is, and has always been, a fearless risk taker, unafraid of the unsafe and the unfamiliar, unafraid to challenge the status quo politically and creatively. So much of the work that he's produced has forged new forms in writing and design and production. It's opened doors, and that has been the hallmark of his time there. It has been characterized by openness, 
openness to new talent, nurturing new writers, actors and directors from every walk of life, and openness to new ideas and dreams, and openness to the needs of the communities around the Young Vic in the boroughs of Lambeth and Southwark, with their stories to tell and their voices to be heard. David has always listened to his staff and his collaborators and his audiences, and if he could say yes, he always did. And above all, he's listened to the world as it constantly changed and evolved. The reach of the Young Vic's work to reflect that world has been long and widely felt. It is, as its motto says, a very big world in there. You walk through the Young Vic stores and there are young people everywhere as ushers, as emerging artists, developing their own projects and as audiences. Young people who would never have set foot in a theater had not David Lan and the Young Vic made it a priority to go out there and find them and welcome them in. His 18 years have proved that with a vision like his, supported by his superb judgment and great generosity, theater can be always relevant, always diverse, and always accessible. And the results of this vision of his and his extraordinary determination are reflected in the incredible, stellar, glittering productions and projects that his theater has produced. He is loved and admired, he is emulated, and he has contributed more to the shaping of our contemporary theater than anyone else I know. So I am very proud to be standing here tonight and presenting this award, <clears throat> this special award, to the legend that is David Lan. Thank you, thank you to the Society for this award. It's a, it's a big one, and I'm pleased, to put it mildly, and surprised, to put it very mildly, um, to get it. Whoever made the decision, uh, I'm grateful to you. It's just me and Judith standing up here, but very many people had to do a great deal on the journey to this big stage on this big evening. I want to name Patrick McKenna, chair of my board, Kevin Fitzmaurice, who was my first executive director, Lucy Woolitz, who was my second executive director, Sue Amos, my very long time associate, Steve Tompkins, the architect of our fabulous building, and my team, my many teams. And then, of course, the Arts Council, the Joad Foundation, the Genesis Foundation, all of whom got in behind our big idea even as we were working out what that big idea might be. And many, many joined along the way. Amongst those especially, I thank the hundreds of great actors like Juliet, writers, directors, designers, technicians, stage managers, without whom, without whom, um, one more without whom, my boyfriend, um, Nick Wright, sitting there in the front row, with whom, with whom I've talked about theatre and many other things for more than 40 years, good God, but I have. And also my long-term friend and inspiration, Stephen Baldry, also without whom. And Stephen's somewhere, somewhere around here tonight. When Frank Dunlop started The Young Vic in London, SE1, in the late 1960s, it was imagined as a place where people could make theatre in the way they wanted their society to be. Open, democratic, equal. 
I believe we stay true to those values. Producers, crew, our whole team thought of our theatre as a welcoming environment in which great artists meet great audiences. All that mattered to us was what happened when night after night those memorable meetings took place. And alongside many great and will be great artists from this country, we welcomed others from Iceland, France, Germany, Brazil, South Africa, the US, Palestine, Congo, Poland, Syria, Belarus, from all over the planet. And we welcomed thousands of non-professionals from our neighborhoods, young as well as old, especially, though not exclusively, the vulnerable in whatever way. For the shows we made with them, we gave the same high status we gave any artist. Over recent years, we've engaged with the world in a special way by inviting into our theater refugees. Dominic has touched on this, but it can't be said too often. Their lives, their stories, themselves as performers. I hope you will forgive me if I contrast the Young Vic's welcoming environment with the hostile environment, to give it its official name, which the Home Office creates in relation to refugees. In particular, the decision to close the door on hundreds of young refugees now scattered across northern France, many with the legal right to live in this country, abandoned to hunger, to cold, to people traffickers, within clear sight of us on a sunny day. And what of those with no legal right? My grandparents fled Lithuania as teenagers in the 1920s, escaping poverty and anti-Semitism. Were they economic migrants? Well, they were certainly after a better life. Fifteen years later, when the Nazis marched in, their parents were killed in the streets. So in retrospect, were Mottl and Golda Lan really political refugees? Their modern-day equivalents are now, as I speak, locked in squalor in Yarlswood and other detention centers. Hundreds are deported or turned away. In The Jungle by Joe Murphy and Joe Robertson, both of whom are sitting over there, which we and the National and Good Chance Theater produced last year, a volunteer at the camp in Calais says of the refugees making their way across Europe, it's only a crisis because we're calling it that. Half a million refugees, the population of Europe is 700 million. How tiny a percentage is that? Go to Jordan, quarter of the people are refugees. In Lebanon, it's a third. Crisis, European governments need to stop breaking their own laws. In Matthew Lopez's The Inheritance, which is now playing at the Young Vic, a character describes the house which symbolizes their sufferings and dreams in this way. As a shelter, a refuge, a place of healing, a reminder of the pain, the fragility, and the promise of life. That's what I hoped my theater would be. We wanted to change the world. Perhaps all we changed was a few streets of London SE1, but that we did. In that spirit, and on behalf of the hundreds, the thousands of citizens of South London and the world who changed it with me, thank you for this.